It's uh, my, my real honor to be part of this year's Talent 12 program. And uh, for me, it has been two very exciting days to hear uh, these inspiring stories from our keynote speakers and my fellow scientists. I want to say thank you to you all. And uh, I want to say a special thank you to uh, ACS and CNN News for putting together this fantastic symposium. Um, well, uh, my name is Zian Zhang. I am a postdoc uh, in k Showcast Lab at UCSF. Um, I'm a student of chemistry, and for me, chemistry is the most exciting when uh, I can use it as a lens to better understand human diseases and as a tool to find better treatments. And in my research, uh, I would always start by asking one simple question, uh, which is what is the chemical difference between a healthy state and a disease state? Now, for example, in a bacterial infection, we have two completely different species and this different species, the bacteria, uh, are causing the disease. So we can target this, uh, this difference and uh, exploit the vulnerability of the bacterial ribosome. Now, uh, but we don't always have two different species to work with in human diseases. Uh, sometimes our disease may, may be localized uh, in a certain tissue of the body, but not other parts, uh, such as the brain. Um, but in some extreme cases, our chemical difference could be as subtle uh, as a single amino acid change uh, on a single oncoprotein between cancer cells and the normal cells. Now, uh, today I want to uh, spend the next uh, few minutes to tell you about uh, a chemical trick we developed, uh, which allowed us to uh, navigate a drug specifically to the brain to treat central nervous system diseases. Now, I'm sure many of you know, uh, brain diseases can be very difficult to treat uh, because of the uh, unique function and anatomy of our brain. Now, for example, uh, this disease, glioblastoma, is the most aggressive type of brain cancer, which affects tens of thousands of patients every year uh, across the world. We don't have to, uh, targeted molecular therapy for glioblastoma, and our current options are only limited to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Now, what's fortunate is that uh, uh, recent research has shown that these tumor cells are, are uh, very dependent on a particular signaling pathway uh, called the mTOR pathway. So it would make sense that uh, one can find a drug uh, to target this vulnerability and to stop the tumor cells from growing. And that is uh, exactly true. Uh, in fact, uh, this molecule called rapalin one uh, slightly scary looking as a chemical, uh, but it is a very good inhibitor of uh, the mTOR uh, protein. And so you might think uh, that uh, this is going to work. And in fact, it does. Uh, in animal models, this rapalin one molecule can uh, reverse the tumor growth and cause it to regress and uh, greatly extend the lifespan of the mice bearing these tumors. So uh, we're almost there. We're almost thinking that we have found a solution, except that our potential solution has one problem. And the problem has to do with the drug, uh, with where the drug actually goes. Now, if the drug goes to the brain, it can fight the tumor there by inhibiting the mTOR in tumor tissues. But part of the drug, and in fact, the majority of the drug will end up in other tissues of the body. And there, the drug doesn't have a tumor to fight. So uh, in fact, it will inhibit the mTOR of our normal cells and cause unacceptable toxic effects. And the reason why is because uh, of what mTOR is, and I have it. Well, mTOR is a, is a, it turns out to be a central controller of uh, the cell. And I want to say thank you to, uh, to Shanique for giving a, a wonderful uh, um, introduction to protein kinases. mTOR is a, a protein kinase too. And what it does is that it integrates a bunch of uh, signals that are including nutrients and stress. And it turns these signals into instructions for the cell when and how to grow. And these instructions take the form of protein phosphorylation, as is the function of a protein kinase. What we really want to do is actually find a drug that can navigate itself to the brain, uh, but doesn't go where it doesn't need to go. But how can we do that? Well, um, in the next two minutes, I'm just going to show you, we found a two-drug strategy uh, where we use a second molecule to control where the first molecule goes and where it works. And to uh, show you how this works, uh, we we'll need to take a more serious look at uh, our drug, which is a gymongous molecule, and our protein, which is a gymongous protein. 
Now, this rapamycin clone molecule is, uh, is a derivative of a natural product called rapamycin. Uh, and uh, as many of you know, rapamycin has its own page in the history of chemical biology. And it's so special because of the way it works. Uh, unlike uh, normal small molecules that just finds its target, rapamycin actually finds help uh, from a, a irrelevant protein and acts as a molecular glue to stitch uh, mTOR to this irrelevant protein called FKBP12. Now, as a result, you have a protein sandwich here, and uh, uh, this innocent FKBP12 actually blocks mTOR from doing its normal job. So in a cell, what our molecule does is that it will first go find this FKBP12 protein and, uh, and say, hey, I need your help to do something. And these two then go hand in hand to find our mTOR target uh, to engage it in a high affinity bivalent interaction. So this is all too complicated, but uh, uh, suffice it to say, uh, what is going on here is that our molecule absolutely needs uh, uh, its FKBP friend uh, to, to do its work. So without FKBP, our molecule uh, will not inhibit for it at all. Now, with this knowledge, uh, we started to think uh, back and uh, look at uh, our original problem. The problem is that we have our drug molecule everywhere and inhibiting mTOR everywhere is bad. So we thought, well, if we could find a red molecule to steal FKBP away from our green active inhibitor, uh, we can stop it from uh, wreaking havoc outside the brain. Um, and if we put a condition that this red molecule doesn't get into the brain, uh, we can actually solve this problem uh, by, by, by uh, controlling when this, uh, our inhibitor works. So uh, to find this red molecule, uh, we, we uh, decided to look at this problem through a chemical lens. And what we really want to do is to find both that doesn't get into the brain. So uh, we took on this challenge by chemically modifying uh, two existing ligands of FKBP12. And uh, we can actually uh, learn from decades of drug discovery efforts in central nervous system diseases. Um, and normally, uh, people want to find a drug that gets into the, the brain. But here we're going to do the exact opposite to what people normally want to do. We're going to put function, polar functional groups onto these molecules so that they don't get into the brain. And uh, long story short, we identified one such molecule, uh, which we call wrapper block. And, and uh, we tested whether it can actually help us achieve brain-specific inhibition. So uh, we treated mice with either a single uh, mTOR inhibitor or a combination of these two. And we looked at uh, how they affect mTOR signaling in different tissues. If we look at the muscle tissue, we see that uh, uh, our ROPA-Link 1 molecule itself wiped out the phosphorylation signals here, uh, indicating that mTOR is being inhibited by uh, the single molecule. But if we use uh, these two molecules together, uh, we don't see this effect. On the other hand, if we look at the brain tissue, we see that mTOR uh, was inhibited in both, uh, when, uh, either when mass is treated with a single inhibitor or a combination of these two molecules. So what these tell us is that uh, uh, we are able to actually achieve um, brain inhibition, uh, sorry, inhibition of mTOR in the brain without affecting it in the muscle when we use our combo therapy. Now, uh, what does it do? Well, uh, we can show that uh, our combination therapy mitigates the typical toxic side effects we see with mTOR inhibitors, such as body weight loss and uh, intolerance to uh, blood glucose. And, uh, but on the other hand, our, our uh, combination therapy is as effective as uh, inhibiting tumor growth and uh, uh, extending the survival uh, of tumor-bearing mice. So to summarize, we started with a problem, which is how can we treat a tumor in the brain? And the solution, the potential solution, uh, was to target the vulnerability of these tumor cells to, to uh, stop them from growing. Uh, but we had a, a second problem because uh, inhibiting mTOR everywhere is bad. So uh, we decided to take a chemical approach and uh, develop the trick where we use a second molecule to control when the first molecule is going to work. And in doing so we can achieve uh, uh, selective targeting of brain tissues. 
Now, although I only talked about uh, brain tumors today, we have uh, used our approach in other central nervous system diseases, such as alcohol use disorder and Parkinson's disease. And we think uh, that this general idea of helping a drug go exactly where it needs to go uh, uh, has a great potential to help us find more uh, safer and more effective therapeutics. Now, uh, I really have uh, numerous people to thank on my chemistry journey, and I'm very pri privileged to have had great mentors, colleagues, friends, dear family with me along my way. And there's definitely no way I could have made it this far without their support. But for the research uh, I presented today, I want to specifically thank uh, my postdoc advisors, Kevon Shokat, for uh, showing me what the chemistry uh, can, uh, can really do. It can make a difference uh, uh, to the uh, health of people and the well-being of a society. I want to thank uh, uh, my co-workers, Kevin and Doug, for uh, joining me to tackle this difficult problem. I want to thank our collaborators, Dorit and Yen, for uh, working on the alcohol disorder use disorder with us. Well, then why is Xi Wen Fan and Karen Wolf for their help with our uh, brain tumor xenografts? And I want to thank uh, ACS and CNN again uh, for having this wonderful uh, event uh, seven years in a row to support young scientists from such a diverse background. And I uh, want to thank these agencies uh, for their funding. And please do reach out and let's talk about uh, chemistry, about life, or both, anything else. So with that, I just want to thank you all for listening, and I'll take questions from here. Thank you so much, Zian. Um, I was wondering, are there plans to move this combination therapy forward uh, into more advanced trials or anything like that? Yes, definitely. We are working on that. I didn't tell you about the alcohol use disorder uh, project, but uh, essentially it's the same approach. We can uh, use the, this mTOR inhibitor uh, to help patients uh, with alcohol use disorders and we're moving uh, forward to, to see if we can uh, uh, use it in a more clinically relevant setting. Thank you so much.